Hey, Josh Powers with Quixel, and today we're going to continue our series on the Mixer Math Stack by diving into the incredibly useful Gradient Remap modifier. So let's get started. Gradient Remap is a mask modifier, which means it doesn't actually create a mask for you. What it does is alter or modifies the components and modifiers of your existing mask stack. In short, Gradient Remap will allow you to remap your mask stack using gradient information. This is a very powerful modifier with several settings that offer some really amazing results. For this tutorial, instead of explaining how each of the settings work and then showing you some practical examples, I'm going to combine the two and show you each setting by demonstrating great ways to put them to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is activate this solid layer here to give us a red paint. By going into mask mode, you'll notice that the layer is already set up with a grungy mask. However, the mask is a bit mid-tone overall, which we might not want. So if I throw on this gradient remap modifier, I'll go into the first setting, which is range. Range acts pretty much the same way as the mask components that use the same slider settings. Left bar expands the dark pixels, while the right bar expands the bright pixels. Because this behaves somewhat like levels without the middle slider, I use this modifier quite a lot to adjust the contrast and levels of my mask. So with just a few tweaks, we were able to make the red paint look more chipped and flaked instead of the overall coverage we had with the mask before. And again, if I hold down shift, I can move both sliders at the same time to adjust the coverage to my liking. All right, let's take a look at how we can utilize repeat, which will allow for the gradient of the mask to be repeated. Here we're using a simple square pattern that I set to a one repeat, spacing of 16, and the bevel and bevel curve are tweaked to give the mask a bit of an angle. If I add a gradient remap to the stack, and then change the repeat to 2, we see the repeat of the base mask gradient extending just a bit past the original mask. If we bump the repeat up to 4, we can see the potential beginnings of a ceiling relief or maybe a ceiling vent cover. And if we slide the curve down to negative 1, we can get a really nice rounded slope along the gradient for a softer look. So what does curve do? Well, curve will set the midpoint of the gradient pattern. So as we pull the curve slider back, we can see the midpoint coming in. And as a result, it gives us this really nice concave curve. And if we bump the curve up to 1, we move that point out, which gives us more of a domed look effect on this cylinder. Let's say we want to make this cylinder a ring instead. Well, I could actually accomplish that by ticking on the mirror checkbox. This will actually mirror the gradient of the mask, which has a lot of uses. Also, because this is all non-destructive and based on stack order, I can activate this additive square pattern then drag the gradient remap to the top of the mask and it will include the square pattern along with the cylinder to give us some really cool results. Then we can play with the range settings to maybe sharpen the edges a bit. And there you go. And for another quick example, if we add a gradient remap over this gradient pattern, set the curve to 1 and mirror on, we get this nice symmetrical slope. And if we copy the gradient remap, set it to overlay and then set the repeat to 2, we can lower the opacity to give us a bit more detail near the edges. And now we have a nice base height map to work with for this pattern. All right, that'll do it for this video. I hope you were able to learn a lot about this really handy modifier and the ways it can be utilized in a variety of different situations. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.